So you finally solved yourself a three by three. And after solving it a few more times, you decided, meh, this is pretty boring. After trying to beat the one minute mark for another hour, you decided you were screwed. You've tried twisting it, turning it, kicking it, punching it, jumping on it, taking it apart, lubing it, sanding it, spitting in it. You've even tried buying a new cube and learning a bunch of algorithms for like three hours. Man, ain't nobody got time for this. Luckily, you don't need to look further because this is the video for you. Though it won't make you a stellar cuber, this is the simplest tutorial on the web for getting started with advanced methodologies for solving the 3x3 Rubik's Cube. Once you've mastered the basics in this video, be sure to check out the description for more information on advanced methodologies both from me and from others around the web to get you solving your cube in under 30 seconds. So what are you waiting for? Grab your cube, either old or new, and let's roll the intro sequence. What's up, cubers? Welcome to the simplest tutorial on the 3x3 Rubik's Cube, and specifically on techniques for solving this puzzle faster. In this video, I want to give a brief overview of the methodologies that I'll be rolling out in the next couple of months on how to solve the 3x3 Rubik's Cube faster. Now, it's pretty likely that you already know how to solve the 3x3 cube using the beginner layer by layer method. And if you don't, definitely check out my video on that before you hop into these advanced methodologies because these really won't make much sense to you unless you already know how to solve the Rubik's Cube. This series of videos, I will be showing you guys techniques, algorithms, strategies, and different approaches for solving the Rubik's Cube much faster and bringing your times from the, you know, minute and a half to one minute in which you're solving it now, all the way down to the 30 second and the 20 second mark consistently. The methodology that's going to be described in these series of videos is going to be called CFOP. Now CFOP stands for CROSS, F2L, OLL, and PLL, which definitely is just a bunch of confusing acronyms. Essentially what it means is in this methodology, instead of solving the CROSS, putting in the corners, building the second layer, and then doing the four steps to building the final layer, the entire system is condensed into these four steps. Uh, the first of which is building the cross, which is what the C stands for. The second of which is F2L, which is building the first two layers. So instead of inserting the corners, we'll be inserting the corners and the edge pieces in at the same time as we build up our uh, cube. OLL then stands for taking the bottom layer and solving for this yellow side or blue side or whatever is the opposite side to the cross that you were initially built, solving the entire side but not really bothering with any of the actual colors around the edges of the cube. So at this point your first two layers will be complete and your yellow face will be complete which is what the OLL stands for. It stands for orienting the last layer. So the last layer, every single piece is going to be oriented yellow up. And finally permuting the last layer is moving these pieces around in such a way as to finalize your cube. Now, once you master all these techniques, the beauty of this and the reason it allows you to solve it so much quicker is because you will be able to optimize your cross solving capabilities and you'll be able to solve the cross in about six or seven moves on average. The first two layers will be completed at the same time instead of building the first layer first and then the second layer. And for the bottom layer, OLL just requires you to just apply a single algorithm. So whatever it is that your cube looks like, you apply one single algorithm and suddenly your entire bottom layer is oriented. And then PLL is another algorithm that will then permute all of the pieces and solve the cube, which means that instead of applying four different algorithms multiple times for the bottom layer, you literally just apply two algorithms and the whole bottom layer is done. Using this methodology will greatly improve your times, but it'll also take a little bit of time to actually learn and wrap your mind around and really get into the complexity of this stuff before you can start memorizing algorithms and really really honing down your times to you know sub 30 sub 20 even sub 15 second times so in this series of videos which are going to get gradually released over the course of the next several months I want to kind of gradually introduce you guys to the world of speed queuing I'm going to begin with a series of intermediate tutorials for the cross, for F2L, for OLL, and for PLL. And these tutorials here, the intermediate tutorials, are going to be designed just to teach you guys kind of the intro, the basics uh, of the actual strategies. They're going to teach you kind of how to think about this stuff and will be very, very minimal on algorithms. Like very few algorithms are actually going to be given. It's just going to make you think, understand the kind of concepts behind it, but not actually have to do any memorization. Then after that, I'm actually going to introduce an advanced line of videos, which is literally going to be presenting you guys with actual memorizable steps 
to uh, create shortcuts on this and to actually memorize, you know, all of the OLL algorithms and all of the PLL algorithms. In addition to these eight videos, I plan to release two more videos that are just basic, very simplistic kind of tips and tricks to improve your speed. Uh, so the first of these is going to be finger tricks and kind of nice little shortcuts for a couple of the algorithms that you could possibly do, things to really improve your uh, movement, your finger movement, minimize the time you spend essentially rotating the cue ball around and just going into very simple techniques that you can use by yourself, like using your own dexterity to improve your time. And the second video is actually gonna hop into the world of the actual hardware, uh, cubes, uh, lubrication, sanding, uh, differences between regular Rubik's Cube and a speed cube and just how you can purchase and modify your main Rubik's Cubes to actually increase your times because a faster moving cube is obviously going to let you solve the cube faster. Now at the time of the release of this little intro video only the intermediate F2L tutorial will be released. All the other videos are coming at a later time. I just wanted to roll this video out a little bit early first of all to give you an idea of the kind of stuff that's coming on this channel but second of all to just even briefly introduce you to the idea of speed solving so that if you would like to go online and look for other resources to help you solve the cross or help you learn OLL or help you learn PLL now you kind of know where to look if you want to even begin how to solve the uh, cube faster but before you go anywhere I highly recommend you check out my F2L tutorial figure out whether or not this is for you and then potentially either come back to this video and take a look at my other advanced videos as soon as these videos are released the links are going to be clickable and the links in the description are obviously going to be clickable and hopefully by the time you're watching this all these videos have been released but obviously this is going to take me several months so it is very possible that uh, while you're watching this some or all of these videos are actually not released so thank you very much for watching feel free to uh, get started with any of these videos that are actually currently clickable hopefully these videos help you guys out a lot and as always happy cubing